This stuff is generally regarded as the Earth's most valuable commodity, but that might not be the case for long. Water is going to be, it is the new oil. Climate change and population growth has pushed the world into what NASA calls a major hydraulic change, aka a global water crisis. The scarcity of water means one thing, its value is going up. It's why investment firms are snatching up land tied to water rights, and French farmers are taking big business and the authorities to court. We look at the impact the world's water problem is having on local communities and how it's reshaping the market. When Edouard de Feligonde was a child, he and his siblings would swim in the mouth of this cave. As kids, we had the water up until here. And now, there's not a drop of water to be seen. This cave is one of the water sources where cold, fresh water from a reservoir under the Puy de Dome volcano emerges. It sits on Edouard's land, which has been a family-run fish hatchery since the 17th century. But the source has been dry since 2018, and the network of pools that were once used to breed trout are no longer in operation due to the severe drop in water levels. Vous voyez, par exemple, il you y a 30-40 ans en arrière, l'eau arrivait jusque-là tous les jours de l'année. C'était constant. Sylvie de la Rosière, head of local water conservation group Préva, is standing above an irrigation canal that carries natural mineral water throughout the town. Today, despite the heavy rainfall we had in May and June, the water levels are very low. There are only three to four centimeters. Sylvie and Edouard blame this on French food and beverage company Danon, which extracts water from the Puy de Dome basin and bottles it under label Volvic. Every day, a steady stream of trucks loaded with freshly bottled water leave the Volvic plant on their way to shelves in more than 60 countries. Edouard says Danon is taking water faster than the water table can replenish itself. The hydrologist he's hired to assess the future of the fish farm predict it will be completely dry in 20 years. Danon wasn't available for a sit-down interview, but answered questions by email. They say that last year, 1.7 billion liters of vulvic water left the plant the equivalent of 680 Olympic-sized swimming pools, and that the company has already reduced water use by 17% since 2017. Sylvie explains that to save the sources from dying, it needs to be reduced more. Here's how it works. This is the Volvic impluvium. When it rains, the rainwater is soaked into the soil and crosses the different volcanic layers, infiltrating faults in the rock and eventually settling into a number of underground basins. There are natural sources where the water emerges. One used to be Edouard's cave, but it's now dried up, and a similar fate threatens the others. Danon is allowed to extract 2.5 billion liters per year. The water levels dropped so low, regional officials put restrictions in place. Local residents and businesses were told they had to reduce water use by 10% by 2025. But the restrictions didn't apply to Dunwall, though they have promised to reduce extraction by 5% in the case of drought. The water belongs to the nation, considered a common good. And globally, water is becoming more scarce. Half of the world's population could be living in areas facing water scarcity by as early as next year. This sets the stage for a range of other problems, like increased risk of disease. Women and children bear the brunt of the hardship. As the ones typically collecting water, they face exploitation. So could water markets be a viable solution? Transporting and selling water from one place where it's abundant to a place where there isn't enough could fill an important need for people where there is water scarcity. But as demand grows, so too will the price. The World Resources Institute ranks Chile as one of the most water-stressed countries in the world, meaning that the country's demand exceeds the available supply. Central Chile 
has been experiencing drought for more than a decade. And the evidence is already visible. This is Laguna Aculeo, one of Chile's lakes. Well, it used to be a lake, because now it looks like this. Hydrologists say that the lack of rainfall in the country has contributed to its demise, but that overexploitation from humans has had the biggest impact. In the 1990s, water from nearby rivers and aquifers, which replenished the lake, were diverted for other uses. The government sold water rights to water-intensive avocado and cherry farms. Summer homes for wealthier residents use some of the water to grow lawns and fill their swimming pools. Experts blame the unchecked sale of water rights during this period as the reason why the lake is dry, and that has encouraged some to try to bring transparency to Chile's water market. We believe that knowing the value of water rights is key to taking care of our resources. And we also see that the Chilean state has not been concerned about this issue. Cristian Valenzuela is a natural resources engineer and founder of Agua Circular, a platform that shows where water rights are being sold and for how much. We want to set a precedent for future public policies that are better oriented than those that exist today. Para manejar los recursos hídricos. Policies that many Chileans hope will change under newly elected leftist president Gabriel Boric, who says he'll support a proposed statute to reform Chile's water laws. Experts point to the privatization of its water, which began in 1981 under the dictatorship of Pinochet, as the biggest culprit of water scarcity. So while water markets can help supply water to areas that need it, bad policy can undo its benefits. Water markets are good tools. Uh, I am in favor, generally speaking, of water markets. But the problem with water markets is that they're a means to an end. They're not an end in and of themselves. And so they have to be well regulated. Global water scarcity, whether it's driven by overextraction or by drought or both, means one simple thing. Its value is going up. Water is everything that gold and oil and wheat is. It is a valuable, saleable commodity. This is Rhett Larson. He's a professor of water law at Arizona State University. One thing water policy people say in the West is water doesn't flow downhill. Water flows to money. Ten years ago, a private company named Greenstone Resource Partners LLC bought a 500-acre parcel of land in Cibola, Arizona for around $10 million. The land came with water rights to the Colorado River, which had been in decline due to drought and overuse. For the first couple of years, Greenstone leased the land back to farmers in the area. And then in 2018, they sold the water rights tied to that parcel of land to a gated community in Phoenix, Arizona. They made a profit of $14 million by shipping the water 200 miles away. Even though the Greenstone sale didn't affect Cibola's municipal water supply, it stunned local residents, who worried about the impact selling water from one community, just to redirect it towards another, will have on farming in the future. This is all according to an investigation by The Guardian. Massachusetts State Senator Elizabeth Warren is trying to put a stop to water futures trading, which allows investors, farmers, and municipalities to speculate on water scarcity and trade water rights as a commodity. Water isn't actually exchanged. And there's one U.S. index giving investors a benchmark of the price development of water in California, the NASDAQ Vela's California Water Index, which launched in 2018. Experts say the danger is that it could encourage investors to buy water rights in order to drive the price up and to make money on the futures market. With more than 2 billion people lacking access to safe water, the idea that water scarcity is being used as a way to make profit is concerning to the United Nations. Last year, the UN held the first conference focusing on water in nearly 50 years. That significant number should demonstrate, should demonstrate just, just how, how seriously, seriously we, take we take water, water security. security. In a statement, it said, water is a human right. It needs to be managed as a common good. Considering water as a commodity or a business opportunity will leave behind those that cannot access or afford the market prices. Back in France, Edouard takes steps to conserve his community's common good. He's taking the French authorities to court, asking them to reduce the amount of water Danone is permitted to pump. 
que cette pisciculture est complètement à sec. This voilà, vous êtes à l'intérieur d'un bassin pici piscicole. Merci Danone. Thank you, Danone. Regardez Look les dégâts que vous faites sur notre territoire. territoire now. Maintenant, ça enough suffit. Is enough. Preva wants to see water levels rise again too. L'eau est notre bien commun, qui appartient à tous, selon la loi, et qui ne doit pas être accaparé par une multinationale comme Danone. Should there be limits on corporations that bottle groundwater for big bucks? What about investment firms that buy water rights, hoping to resell them for a profit? What do you think? Let us know in the comments.